I'm your host, Annalise Garrison. Please be sure and take notes for today's presentation because I'm going to discuss the new way that the NCLEX is approaching the exam, and it's extremely important. Today I'm going to talk about the clinical judgment model. What is the clinical judgment model approach to taking the NCLEX exam? It is a model in which the NCLEX takes into account the student's ability to number one, form hypotheses, then prioritize them. The third step is to come up with a solution for the hypotheses, then take action based on those solutions. Let's discuss. You can't even begin to form a hypothesis about the question until you recognize cues. The process of recognizing cues is to identify relevant and important information from different sources, such as the medical history, uh, vital signs, subjective and objective data, uh, lab work. This is where we recognize cues that are uh, about the question. Um, we want to look at the information and we want to see what information is most important. Pick that out, right? What information is relevant? What information is of immediate concern? Don't connect these cues with the big picture just yet, right? Don't connect these cues with the hypothesis just yet. Just look at the question and pick out the important information. That's step one. Identify relevant and important information. After we get a picture of the cues, right, then we want to analyze the cues. So what does it mean to analyze cues? Analyzing cues is when you organize and link the recognized cues to the client's clinical presentation. You want to think to yourself, what conditions are consistent with the cues? Are there cues that support or contraindicate a particular condition? Why is this particular cue a concern? What other information would help establish the validity of a cue? You want to consider, consider multiple things at this point. Consider multiple things that could be happening in the question. Narrowing down uh, specific items comes in the next step. So we talked about recognizing cues. We talked about analyzing cues. Now let's talk about the next step. So now that we've looked at the question, we have recognized the cues. We have analyzed the cues. Now we want to take these cues and we want to form a hypothesis. What do I mean by that? And not only do we want to form a hypothesis, but you could come up with multiple hypotheses as to what the NCLEX question is asking. So you need to prioritize your hypotheses. So let's talk about that. By the way, I'd like to remind you all to please take notes. This information was given to NCLEX test writers. These are things the writers take into consideration when formulating a question, and I'm passing it on to you. So please take notes of this presentation. So when we prioritize hypotheses, we evaluate and rank our hypothesis according to priority. In other words, urgency, likelihood, risk, difficulty, time, etc. Right? We want to think what explanations are most likely, what explanations are least likely, and which possible explanations are the most serious for this question. We want to focus on ranking issues from most likely to least likely. 
The fourth step we want to do is to generate solutions. This is how the NCLEX test writers formulate your SATA questions. Your select all that apply because they have multiple solutions. So you want to focus on generating possible solutions. In generating solutions, you want to identify expected outcomes and use hypotheses to generate interventions for symptoms or the outcomes, right? Think to yourself, what is the desired end result? What interventions can achieve the end result? And what should be avoided, right? You want to focus on goals and multiple interventions, not just the best one that connect to the goals. Potential solutions could include collecting additional information. Then we want to take action, right? We want to implement solutions that address the highest priority. Let's talk about that for a minute. When we take action, we implement the solutions that addresses the highest priority. Which interventions are most appropriate? How should the interventions be accomplished or performed or requested or administered or communicated, right? Or taught or documented. Your answers should include action verbs such as these. Our sixth and last approach in the clinical judgment model is to evaluate the outcomes. When we talk about evaluating outcomes, we mean that we're comparing observed outcomes against expected outcomes. In this phase, you want to think, what signs point to improving status? What signs point to declining status? What or what signs point to unchanged status? Also remember to think, were the interventions effective? Um, would other interventions have been more effective? This is the time where you evaluate whether your thought process was correct or not. Or maybe you should have thought about something else, right? You want to focus on the effectiveness of the interventions. Let's take a question and work all that we learned thus far into a question. All right? Hmm. What kind of question do I want to pick for us? So let's read this question, then we'll analyze it, okay? Uh, a client was involved in a motor vehicle accident, is admitted to the hospital. His wife arrives on the unit six hours after her husband's accident, explaining that she had been out of town. She is distraught because she was not with her husband when he needed her. Which of the following is the most appropriate nursing intervention at this time? Now let's take this question one at a time. What are the cues? So what are some of the cues that we see here in this um, question? Uh, accident, admitted to the hospital. The wife arrives six hours later. She's been out of town. She's distraught. So these are the cues. Now let's analyze these cues. Do we need all of these cues? And if we do need these cues, what are the most important cues to the least important cues? The second step we got to do when we talk about clinical judgment is we have to now analyze these cues. Are all of these cues important? Well, the fact that the client was in, the uh, in an accident admitted to the hospital is important. I think that the wife arriving six hours later is important. 
uh, why she arrived six hours later is not important. So, out of town is not important. If you're analyzing the cues, you can throw that out. Because what is the purpose of analyzing the cues? The analyzing the cues, the purpose of that is organizing and linking the recognized cues to the client's clinical presentation. Uh, why she arrived six hours later does not lend any credence to his clinical presentation. The fact that she arrived six hours late, the f later the fact that she's distraught because she was not with her husband when he needed her is important to her situation as well as his. All right. So, what's our third step? Now, we can formalize a hypothesis with these cues that we have collected and with what the question is asking us. The question is actually asking us to take action, right? It's because if we look at the question again, it says, which of the following is the most appropriate nursing intervention at this time? I know that there's six steps to this clinical judgment model, but really, we don't need to form a hypothesis. We know that we have the full picture, right? There's no reason to, to guess what we might have to do with this question. So we don't need to, to prioritize hypotheses because uh, we already have the full picture. He was in an accident. The wife came later, she's distraught. What is the best nursing intervention we should take, right? So for this question, we can skip the prioritizing the hypothesis. And we also don't need to generate any solutions because we don't need to find a solution. We need to take action. We need to implement the solution. In this case, the, 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 the solution is which of the following is the most appropriate nursing intervention for this whole situation for the husband and the wife? So uh, we want to address the issues that take highest priority. Uh, what intervention in the list of four multiple choice uh, is most appropriate? Um, so let's, let's read the choices. Allow her to verbalize her feelings and concerns. B. Describe her husband's medical treatment since admission. C. Explain her husband's condition is stable. Or D. Reassure her that the important fact is that she is here now. I picked A. Because it does take all the cues into, you know, one of the cues is that she was distraught for not being there with her husband when he needed her. So A allows her to verbalize her feelings and concerns. I didn't pick B because this is something the doctor should do. Plus, we didn't have the cues to know what his complete medical condition was, right? Describe her husband's medical treatment since admission. There's no cues telling me what his treatment was. So I can't pick that as a solution, right? Uh, explain to her that her husband's condition is stable. Once again, there's no cues telling me that her husband is stable. Can't do it. I can't form a hypothesis. I can't prioritize a hypothesis. I cannot come up with solutions without the cues being there. So I couldn't do B. I couldn't do a D. And I couldn't do C. I couldn't do D because D does not allow for verbalization and discounts her feelings. As mentioned, the cues were she was six hours late and she was distraught. So I need to address those cues. All right, so this 
is the new way that the NCLEX is writing the NCLEX test questions. I hope you took notes and please rewind and, re and watch this again. Please call me uh, for tutoring. I will put up my information up right now. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.